Hey guys, thank you so much for bearing with me here. Uh, I had to run out and grab the Testo 550 off the, the American Standard heat pump out back. And uh, basically what we've done, guys, is we've taken the uh, the suction side and we've ran our, our, our suction line hose up to our suction line port right here on our American Standard coil. And uh, we removed our CPS compound gauge. And uh, we also took and we removed our uh, fill piece and with our temperature probe on it, we took that off and we replaced it with our Testo uh, 550 uh, temperature probe, which is actually running back to the suction line of the of the instrument itself as, as well. Uh, just for giggles, went ahead and put on the uh, the liquid side of the uh, of the Testo here, the temperature probe, the liquid side temperature probe. And basically, the only reason we did that, guys, is because I just wanted to show once again that uh, the uh, the delta T that we are actually reading on our on our Testo 550 or 557 or 570 is actually actually the temperature differential in between T1 and T2 okay and we'll, we'll show you that here in just one second all right guys what we actually did was we uh, we removed our, our CPS gauge here our compound gauge and um, I'm sure there's a lot better gauges on the market and there is a, 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 a need for these gauges um, basically uh, one, one great need is uh, like uh, I've seen several of my great buddies on here like Zach or Eddie these are actually fantastic for uh, actually uh, sucking the refrigerant back into the condenser you know when you're getting ready to uh, to break away but uh, or you know have to braise in a coal or whatnot but uh, anyway um, basically with this one here like I said I know there's a lot better ones on the market but if you can look at that zero right there and you see the hash marks going up to the hundred uh, right there um, basically, the one you're seeing the hash mark with the dot in it, that's the actual 50. They're, in, they're increments of 10. So right after that 50, you would have the hash marks going 60, 70, 80, 90, all the way up to that 100. And whenever I'm doing anything, guys, I don't know about you, but me, I can't never be dead on something. So we were actually in between the 60 and the 70. So I actually didn't know exactly what my, my pressure was. I mean, it could have been 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, you know what I'm saying? 70. And uh, without knowing exactly what your pressure is, you're not going to know exactly what your saturation temperature is. And if you're rocking it old school, guys, you're going to have to know exactly what your saturation temperature is, and you're going to have to know exactly what your uh, suction line temperature is. You minus your suction line temperature from your saturation temperature, and that's going to give you what your actual superheat is. And what we're actually doing here is we're, we're going to try to obtain what our actual evaporator superheat temperature is. Okay, guys? All right, um, let's see here. If you, if you look close here at the gauge, or at, uh, at the digital manifold here, uh, where you're looking at the pressure right here. Like I stated before, on this side, on the left bottom, is going to be our suction line pressure, and directly above it is going to be our temperature. Our T1 is going to be our temperature. And right over here, like I said, just for giggles, I hooked the, this temperature probe up to the liquid, so this is T2 is actually going to be our liquid line temperature. All right, uh, we don't have the, uh, the uh, liquid liquid hose hooked up to anything we don't have a port to do it but this is still I, I have a refrigerant still on the line so we, we're still under somewhat of a pressure here so basically we're going to get to that here in a minute too all right guys well if you look closer here uh we're looks like we're running at 64.7 65 we're fluctuating in, in around there with the with the txv and everything but uh Basically, guys, uh, I believe out back we were running at 62, okay? I think we're running at 62.7, 63. And down here we're running at 64 to 65. So what's that a difference of two? Uh, 62, 63, yeah, difference about two or so. And uh, basically, guys, um, what this has something to do with is I'm not super technical here, so please forgive me if I, if I, if I might word something wrong. I'm, I'm not doing it intentionally. But uh, basically, I guess this would have something to do with what they call friction loss or pressure loss. And guys, that's going to be due to my, 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 my refrigerant lines here. And uh, I have 90s in my refrigerant lines. That could cause friction loss. Um, if you have, uh, like, say you, uh, you didn't have insulation on your lines, that could cause it. Uh, basically, uh, I'm running 50, about 55 foot of line set here. That has a lot to do with it. I'm actually in a conditioned space here. You know, you might have one that's actually running in the attic and it might actually, you know, might have got the insulation ripped off of it running in the attic. That has a lot to do with it. Okay, guys? All right, now if you notice too, now out back, we actually, our temperature, our suction line temperature was a little bit higher. I believe we were running at like 56 or 57 outside. Here, we're actually running on T1, our suction line temperature, we're running at 51.1. Well, that's got a lot to do with we're coming directly out of the coil. 
right here. We're coming directly out right, right, right after the bulb here. And uh, we've actually got cold air blowing on it, okay? And that's what's uh, giving us that temperature, okay? And of course the 78s, just because we got it hooked to the liquid line and the, uh, the liquid line pressure is just because I got residual refrigerant in the, uh, in the lines here. But uh, anyway, guys, let's move along here. Okay, guys, what we're looking at here, we're looking at, uh, uh, the pressures are still the same, but we're actually looking here now as we're looking at the evaporator temperature, okay, the evaporator temperature. And uh, when I first got these guys, I actually thought that that was uh, the actual air that was coming out of my uh, out of my out of my coil here. But what this is, guys, is like we proved before. This is actually actually the saturation temperature, and uh, we can actually prove this again with our PT chart, guys. So let's look here. We got uh, 64 to 65. Let's see what we got on here. Uh, let's see. Do we have a 64? Yes, we have a 64, and it looks like 64 is 37. Okay, guys, it's 64. We're running 37 there, okay? All right, well, here, here's the point here, okay? This is not our true liquid line pressure, and this is not, and, but this is our true, uh, uh, well, basically, what this is doing, it's telling us what the saturation temperature is at this pressure. And even though it's not hooked up, it's, it's still being able to tell us what the saturation temperature is. All right, so we're running, uh, what is that, 115 at 66. Do we have a 115? Yes, we do. 115 is 67. Can y'all see that? 115 is 67, okay? And uh, we're running at almost a 67 there. We're at 66.9, fluctuating in, in between there. Okay, guys, but, but y'all know this is all direct correlation of pressures to temperatures. 100%. No matter what the pressure temperature is, or what it, no matter what the pressure is, it's going to have a direct correlation with the saturation temperature. Okay? Pressures and temperatures. Pressures and temperatures. Okay, guys. All right. Well, let's move on along. Let's move on along here. All right. What's next? Okay. There's our delta T. Let's let's run back here real quick. Okay. What's 78.3 minus 50.9? I bet it's 27.4, somewhere in there. You know, I guarantee the temp. It's fluctuating because of the TXV. It's not going to be, a, you know, we're, we might be off a few points. So, but anyway, tw that's what I'm saying right there, 27.5. You know, we rifle back, what is it, 78.4 minus 50.9. That should be 27.5. But anyway, okay, well, let's move along. Now, what this actual video was about was, uh, you know, recognizing what our pressures uh, our pressures convert to saturation temperature but what we are actually doing also was out back we we determined what our uh, design subcooling was and we were pretty much dead on I think we were right right at 10 and we were actually wanting to look at both sides of the system and see what our superheat was doing so actually out back I, I guess out at the condenser we would actually call that uh, uh, full our uh, uh, full system uh, superheat, I guess, uh, I, I'm not positive on the, on the terminology there. I guess it'd be called full system superheat or compressor superheat or whatnot. But what we're actually doing right now, guys, is we're actually doing uh, evaporator superheat. So out back, I believe we were running like right at 20, somewhere in the 20. Uh, I think it was like, uh, actually, I think it was like 20.3 when I checked it, but it, it, it was actually fluctuating just a little bit also. But let's go ahead and see what our superheat is on our evaporator. Okay, it's uh, 13, guys. 13. Uh-oh. wonder what that means. Okay, guys. Actually, I don't think it means anything bad whatsoever. Um, basically, what I've been told by several of my friends and, and from a lot of the reading like I do, you know, I told you I, I read all the PDFs I possibly can, and a lot of my buddies actually have told me that most of the manufacturers now, not all of them, but most of the manufacturers of the TXVs are setting them up, are designing them to be a 12-degree uh, uh, superheat, okay? 12 degree superheat. Okay, guys, um, I hope that helps some of y'all out, or you know, maybe actually help y'all see the different sides of the uh, the refrigeration system on here. But uh, anyway, I, I kind of enjoyed it, and I hope y'all did too. But uh, actually, I talked to you know, I talked to Eddie all the time, a real good buddy of mine on here, and uh, he actually has another way that he actually comes up with it. But I mean, actually, now all he does is actually pull the 435 out and wham, bam, you know, you're ready, ma'am. But uh, he actually has got another little way he does it if he doesn't want to pull that out. He actually owns like the Testo. It's that super fast uh, 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 temperature probe where you just lay it right on it and it'll give you the temperature immediately. And he actually uses that. And what he'll actually do is he'll get his uh, return air temperature. 
which is uh, I believe it's 66.2 now or 66.4 it's, it's still fluctuating it might even go up to 67 and what he actually does is he'll get that temperature right there and what he actually does is he'll take that temperature and he minuses it by 35 okay so what are we at now 66.4 minus 35 okay let's go over here and write that down Sixty six point four. Sixty six point two, sixty six point four. It's hanging in there. All right, sixty six point four minus thirty five. That's going to give us four, one, and three. Okay, so we're looking at thirty one point four. Okay, y'all with me? We took the 66.4, or you know, like I said, it's moving around, but that's what we're going to stick with, 66.4 minus 35. 66.4 minus 35 gives us 31.4. Okay, guys, what we're actually going to do now is he comes over here and he gets his suction line temperature. He'll actually take that fast testo probe and he'll put it right on, there on a suction line and he'll get his suction line temperature. So our suction line temperature on this one is uh, right now we're running at 50.7, okay? And we're going to take this 31 and minus it. 31.4. That's going to give us 3. Make that 4. So we've got uh, 9 and 1. Okay, man. Uh, we're right there at it, guys. We've got 19.3. 19.3 superheat out back is what that what that's actually is the way he described it to me is what that's actually telling us. By taking the actual uh, return air uh, temperature, minusing it by 35, and actually taking the suction line temperature and minusing the, whatever you get from the six, you know, the the return air temperature minus the uh, 35, and then you take your uh, suction line temperature and minus that, and what we came up with was 19.3, and uh, I believe we were actually running at uh, right at 20 up back, so that's pretty daggone close, guys. Pretty daggone close. But uh, anyway, guys, I just want to thank y'all so much for watching my videos. And uh, like I said, I know this ain't nothing spectacular, and I probably made a few mistakes. But uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, I helped some of y'all out. And uh, I, I appreciate it so much, and uh, it means the world to me. All right, guys, I, I reckon we'll holler at y'all soon. Thanks so much. Bye.